Home ventilation can be just any device that helps you to breathe because because breathing is a combination of um, oxygen in, which is oxygenation, and ventilation, which is carbon dioxide out. And so what we're trying to improve is worker breathing. And to that goal, then, by improving worker breathing, we improve overall health by um, normalizing the body system and hopefully then making sure that you have a good growth development and optimal neurological development um, either of muscle strength, if possible, and tone, or at least of um, uh, intellectual and emotional development. And that can be done in a multitude of ways. And home ventilation now has become more, um, uh, both more acceptable and also more available to some extent. And there's a lot of different machines that are, um, are available to help with ventilation to some extent. What we use primarily in, or have traditionally used primarily in SMA community is bi-level positive airway pressure um, or non-invasive ventilation. Um, and that can be provided by a variety of different machines and different makers. But one thing that we, that I think at, that, that I have done in my practice is introduce the concept of um, both, uh, of, of um, both non-invasive and invasive ventilation uh, for health promotion um, at an early stage so that the families can know that that is an option out there and then when to apply that is going to be individualized. So the best practices are to know what's available and to be able to discuss them with everybody but then individualized approach to that particular individual and their family. Uh, I think though that more families need to be aware that non-invasive ventilation or invasive ventilation could be an option at different times in their um, life, depending on their conditions, and um, that there are different machines that can, uh, that can apply it. Um, the majority of the SMA patients that I follow usually are on a, either a bi-level positive airway pressure device or on a home ventilator that's used non-invasively. Non-invasively means that there's not a tube in your, th in your throat, like an endotracheal tube or a tube in your, I mean, in your mouth or a tube in the throat, which is a tracheostomy. And, um, and the machines I use usually always have the ability to set up a backup rate, um, ability to um, change different um, individual options such as inspiratory time or eye time, rise time, um, and the ability to um, blend in oxygen and the ability to have humidification, heated humidification is an option where or not you choose to use it. It's my job um, as a pulmonologist to, to know what is available as an option um, to treat my patients. And there are many um, medications and devices that are out there that, that that I need to be aware of so that I can present a um, educated and hopefully unbiased um, uh, information to the, to, the, to the patients and families that I support. Um, but I think that the key to having a successful relationship with, um, with your physician or um, in, any, in whatever it is, is to individual, individualize that approach to you because it's not a one size fit all. There's, you know, there are definitely, you know, if there's one um, uh, device or there's one intervention that we all uniformly as pulmonologists should take care of, of individuals with SMA say is, you know, all individuals with SMA should be aware of the cough assist machine and how to do some type of airway clearance. Um, outside of that, you know, it's my job to let you know what other options are available and then tailor it for you depending on your needs at the time. So w for so a lot of the care that I do um, will be um, individualized to you as an individual, but also to certain time frames. So for example, you may not need it when you're sick, and you definitely need it, you may not need it when you're healthy, but you definitely need it when you're sick, or you need more or less at certain times. And then, you know, there are certain medications that you may use in one situation, but you may not in, an, in another. And the, the analogy that I use is um, sometimes these, these devices or medications are used like you would use Tylenol when someone's sick. You know, you take Tylenol when you're not feeling well, but then when you're feeling better, you don't take Tylenol.